Hello students, here we are going to continue with fourth unit with its fourth topic that is recovery. To know about the recovery, we must know about the types of failure. First type of failure is transaction failure. It is of two types. First is logical errors. Second is system errors. In logical errors, Transaction cannot complete due to some internal error condition. In system errors, the database system must terminate an active transaction due to an error condition. Example is deadlock. Now moving to the next subtopic that is system crash. It is a power failure or other hardware or software failure that causes the system to crash. Fail stop assumption, non-volatile storage contents are assumed to not be corrupted by system crash. Database system have numerous integrity checks to prevent corruption of a disk data. Second is disk failure. A head crash or a similar disk failure destroys all or part of disk storage Destruction is assumed to be detectable. Disk drives use checksums to detect failures. There are some recovery algorithms which are used to recover the data whenever failure occurs. Recovery algorithms are techniques to ensure database consistency and transaction atomicity and durability despite failures. A recovery algorithm have two parts. First is the actions taken during normal transaction processing to ensure enough information exists to recover from failures. Second is actions taken after a failure to recover the database contents to a state that ensures atomicity, consistency and durability. Moving to the storage structures, there are various types of storage structures. First is volatile, second is non-volatile and third is stable storage. First is volatile storage. Volatile storage does not survive system crashes, example main memory and cache memory. Non-volatile storage survive system crashes example disk tape flash memory and ram stable storage a mythical form of storage that survives all the failures approximated by maintaining multiple copies on distinct non-volatile media moving to the next topic that is data access in data access we are going to learn about physical blocks, buffer blocks. In physical blocks are those blocks that are residing on the disk, whereas buffer blocks are the blocks that are residing temporarily in main memory. Block movements between disk and main memory are initiated through the following two operations. First is input that transfers the physical block B to memory. Second is the output that transfers the buffer block B to the disk and replaces the appropriate physical block there. Each transaction TI has its private work area in which local copies of all the data items accessed and updated by it are kept. TI's local copy of a data item X is called XI. We assume for simplicity that each data item fits in and is stored inside a single block. Moving to the next subtopic that is recovery and atomicity. Modifying the database without ensuring that the transaction will commit may leave the database in an inconsistent state. Consider transaction TI that transfers $50 from account A to account B. Goal is either to perform all the database modifications made by TI or none at all. Several output operations may be required for TI. 
a failure may occur after one of these modifications have been made but before all of them are made to ensure atomicity despite failures we first output information describing the modification to stable storage without modifying the database itself for recovery there are two approaches first is the log based recovery and second is the shadow paging we assume that transactions run serially that is one after the other now talking about the log based recovery a log is kept on stable storage the log is a sequence of log records and maintain a record of update activities on the database when transaction ti starts it registers itself by writing ti start log record before ti executes write a log record ti x v1 v2 is written where v1 is the value of x before the write and v2 is the value to be written to x log record notes that ti has performed a write on data item xj xj had value v1 before the write and will have value v2 after the write when ti finishes its last statement the log record ti commit is written we assume for now that log records are written directly to stable storage two approaches for using logs are deferred database modification and immediate database modification talking about the deferred database modification the deferred database modification scheme records all the modifications to the log but defers all the writes to after partial commit whereas immediate database modification scheme allows database updates of an uncommitted transaction to be made as the writes are issued since undoing may be needed update logs must have both old value and a new value moving to the next sub topic that is checkpoints streamline recovery procedure by periodically performing checkpointing output all the log record currently residing in the main memory onto the stable storage output all the modified buffer blocks to the disk write a log record checkpoint on stable storage now talking about the second approach of recovery that is shadow paging shadow paging is an alternative to log based recovery this scheme is useful if transactions execute serially the main idea behind shadow paging is to maintain two page table during the lifetime of a transaction the current page table and the shadow page table it stores the shadow page table in non volatile storage such that the state of the database prior to transaction execution may be recovered shadow page table is never modified during execution to start with both the page tables are identical only current page table is used for data item accesses during execution of the transaction whenever any page is about to be written for the first time a copy of this page is made onto an unused page the current page table is then made to point to the copy the update is performed on the copy now moving to the next sub topic that is remote backup system the remote backup system provides high availability by allowing transaction processing to continue even if the primary site is destroyed next is the detection of failure backup site must detect when primary site has failed to distinguish primary site failure from link failure maintain a several communication links between the primary and remote backup next is the transfer of control 
to take over control backup site first perform recovery using its copy of the database and all the log records it has received from the primary thus completed transactions are redone and incomplete transactions are rolled back when the backup site takes over processing it becomes a new primary to transfer control back to the old primary when it recovers old primary must receive redo logs from the old backup and apply all the updates locally this was all about recovery and how to maintain backups of some database i hope you understand this lecture thank you